William the Lion, sometimes styled William I, also known by the nickname Garb, the Rough, reigned as King of the Scots from 1165 to 1214. He had the second longest reign in Scottish history before the Act of Union with England in 1707. James VI would have the longest life. He became king following his brother Malcolm IV's of death on 9 December 1165 and was crowned on 24 December 1165. In contrast to his deeply religious, frail brother, William was powerfully built, red-headed, and headstrong. He was an effective monarch whose reign was marred by his ill-fated attempts to regain control of Northumbria from the Normans. Traditionally, William is credited with founding Arbroath Abbey, the site of the later declaration of Arbroath. He was not known as the Lion during his own lifetime, and the title did not relate to his tenacious character or his military prowess. It was attached to him because of his flag or standard, a red lion rampant with a forked tail on a yellow background. This went on to become the royal standard of Scotland, still used today but courted with those of England and of Ireland. It became attached to him because the chronicler John of the Forden called him the Lion of Justice. William was grandson of David I of Scotland. He also inherited the title of Earl of Northumbria in 1152 from his father, Henry of Scotland. However he had to give up this title to King Henry II of England in 1157. This caused trouble after William became king, since he spent a lot of effort trying to regain Northumbria. William was a key player in the revolt of 1173-1174 against Henry II. In 1174, at the Battle of Annick, during a raid in support of the revolt, William recklessly charged the English troops himself, shouting, Now we shall see which of us are good knights. He was unhorsed and captured by Henri's troops led by Ranulf de Glanville and taken in chains to Newcastle, then Northampton, and then trans transferred to Falaise in Normandy. Henry then sent an army to Scotland and occupied it, as ransom and to regain his kingdom. William had to acknowledge Henry as his feudal superior and agree to pay for the cost of the English army's occupation of Scotland by taxing the Scots. The Church of Scotland was also subjected to that of England. This he did by signing the Treaty of Falaise. He was then allowed to return to Scotland. In 1175 he swore fealty to Henry II at York Castle. The humiliation of the Treaty of Falaise triggered a revolt in Galloway which lasted until 1186 and prompted construction of a castle at Dumfries. In 1179, meanwhile, William and his brother David personally led a force northwards into Easter Ross, establishing two further castles, and aiming to discourage the Norse Earls of Orkney from expanding beyond Caithness. A further rising in 1181 involved Donald MacWilliam, direct descendant of King Duncan II of Scots. Donald briefly took over Ross, not until his death was William able to reclaim Donald's stronghold of Inverness. Further royal expeditions were required in 1197 and 1202 to fully neutralise the Orcadian threat. The Treaty of Falaise remained in force for the next 15 years. Then Richard the Lionheart, King of England, needing money to take part in the Third Crusade, agreed to terminate it in return for 10,000 silver marks. On 5 December 1189, William attempted to purchase Northumbria from Richard in 1194, as he had a strong claim over it. However, his offer of 15,000 marks was rejected due to wanting the castles within the lands, which Richard was not willing to give. Despite the Scots regaining their independence, Anglo-Scottish relations remained tense during the first decade of the 13th century. In August 1209 King John decided to flex the English muscles by marching a large army to Norham, in order to exploit the flagging leadership of the aging Scottish monarch, as well as promising a large sum of money, the ailing William agreed to his elder daughters marrying English nobles and, when the treaty was renewed in 1212, John apparently gained the hand of William's only surviving legitimate son and heir, Alexander, for his eldest daughter, Joan. 
Despite continued dependence on English goodwill, William's reign showed much achievement. He threw himself into government with energy and diligently followed the lines laid down by his grandfather, David I. Anglo-French settlements and feudalization were extended, Newburgh's founded, criminal law clarified, the responsibilities of justices and sheriffs widened, and trade grew. Arbroath Abbey was founded, and the Bishopric of Argyll established in the same year as papal confirmation of the Scottish Church by Pope Celestine III. William is recorded in 1206 as having cured a case of scrofula by his touching and blessing a child with the ailment whilst at York. William died in Stirling in 1214 and lies buried in Arbroath Abbey. His son, Alexander II, succeeded him as king, reigning from 1214 to 1249. Marriage an issue. Due to the terms of the Treaty of Falaise, Henry II had the right to choose William's bride. As a result, William married Ermengarde of Beaumont, a great-granddaughter of King Henry I of England, at Woodstock Palace in 1186. Edinburgh Castle was her diary. The marriage was not very successful, and it was many years before she bore him an heir. William and Ermengarde's children were Margaret, married Hubert de Burgh, 1st Earl of Kent, Isabel, married Roger Bigot, 4th Earl of Norfolk and Robert, of Furfan, de Ros, Sir Knight and had issue, Alexander II of Scotland, Marjorie, married Gilbert Marshall, 4th Earl of Pembroke, out of wedlock, William I had numerous children, the descendants being among those who would lay claim to the Scottish crown, by an unnamed daughter of Adam de Hydus. Margaret married Eustace de Vessel Lord of Annock, by Isabel d'Avenel, Robert de London, Henry de Golightly, father of Patrick Golightly, one of the competitors to the crown in 1291. Ada Fitzwilliam, married Patrick I, Earl of Dunbar, Africa, married William de Say, and his grandson Roger de Mandeville was one of the competitors to the crown in 1291. Isabella Mac William married Robert III de Bruce then Robert Furfan de Ros, Magna Carta Soretta. Fictional portrayals. William I has been depicted in a historical fantasy novel, An Earthly Night by Janet McNaughton. The novel is set in the year 1162. William, a younger brother and heir to Malcolm IV of Scotland, is betrothed to Lady Jeanette Jenny Avenel. She is the second daughter of a Norman nobleman and the marriage politically advances her family but she is romantically interested in Tamlin, a man enchanted by the fairy queen. Ancestry